Hello and welcome to a new video of the Path to DevOps series. Today we're talking about pipelines, starting with a bit of pipeline theory and then ending with a practical exercise like I've gotten you accustomed with. So if this sounds fine, let's jump right into business. All right, theory time. So let's imagine we all have one developer friend and this friend of ours is writing code for an application. And they just found out that you're going on this path to DevOps journey and they needed a DevOps. They needed a DevOps to take their application and offer it publicly for consumption. So what are the logical steps that you need to go through? Well, if you're going to answer along the lines of get access to the source code and then download the source code and then compile the source code and then test the application that resulted then validate that everything's fine and then deploy that into some sort of infrastructure for the public to be able to access it well you wouldn't be wrong obviously there are more steps than this but let's keep it to a minimum so we now know the steps but if you're now thinking of doing this every day manually while your friend does minute changes to the code, I would say that you're insane because it will take a lot of time and it's repeatable work. And us as DevOps engineers, we have a solution. We can automate it. So how do we automate all of these processes? Well, the answer is obvious and simple and you can also see it in the title. It's pipelines, you're welcome, thank you very much. And no, I'm kidding. So what are pipelines? Well, basically a pipeline is like a recipe where you put all of your steps in order and you script them so that they can be executed automatically. And then you pass this recipe to a little robot, which usually CICD engines call an agent. Yeah, so you give this set of logical steps to an agent and it processes them in order. And in the end, you obtain what you would have obtained if you do that manually. But why would you automate processes using pipelines? Well, let me give you a couple of reasons. First of all, it's very easy to run again and again and again and again. And you can also run them in parallel if you have like three microservices like we do, spoiler, and you need to run them all in parallel. If you have three agents, you can make them all run and be executed at the same time. While if I was to do this manually, it might take longer. Then it's very easy for anyone with access, obviously, to run a pipeline. You just hit the run button. That's basically it. Obviously, you might need to input some uh, parameters, but it's very simple to run. You don't need to understand how to compile an application in order to be able to run a pipeline that compiles an application. It's also documentation in itself. If you don't know how to compile an application, you can actually read the pipeline and understand the commands that are being run in succession and obviously learn how to compile the application you can put the pipeline some of the times when it's code based like JSON, YAML, Groovy, whatever. Uh, if it's code based, you can actually check it in into version control. Isn't that cool? You can keep records of it. Uh, everybody does it. You will move away from human error. You won't have all your colleagues at your desk asking you to help them compile their applications. Everything will be automated. They can do it themselves. You're the person who maintains the processes that others use, all right? That's basically how you create value as a DevOps engineer. Obviously, everybody knows about this buzzword CICD pipelines and they have it on their resume and obviously thousands other reasons. So don't forget kids, automate your processes. This cute baby llama demands it. Because I felt bad about mentioning CICD and not actually sharing my knowledge with you guys and explaining what it is, here we are. So I found this diagram online and I think it's the best example we have to explain the two terms. CI stands for continuous integration 
and it actually refers to the development habit of writing new code features. Uh, basically, you have your code base and you have a main branch, usually called main or master or whatever, actually. And that's where your code resides. And when a developer wants to make a change, they actually create a new branch from the main one and they start developing. And when they want to integrate that change back into the main branch, well, that's where CI enters the fray let's say, and you have this automated build that gets triggered and the application gets compiled and then tested. And basically you need the build to uh, function properly and to complete successfully. And you need all your unit tests to pass in order to be able to bring that functionality back into the main branch. So continuous integration is more of a habit of having your code um, merged as often as possible into the main branch so that you have smaller packets of functionality brought in and whenever there's a breaking change you can actually uh, fix it quickly or revert from it and basically ci uh, if you overlay it to this diagram looks like this it stops here after the test outcome and then we have cd uh, and the first cd we're going to talk about stands for continuous delivery and it's an extension of ci it also means that once you've built uh, this artifact and everything looks nice you can actually uh, deploy it and promote it onto several environments starting from the first one whatever you call it up to production but there's a catch you always need human intervention so even though the process is almost fully automated once code uh, gets vetted and it passes on to being deployed onto an environment someone a human being must actually check a box or tick something in order for that uh, deployment to be completed or to be uh, accepted and this is how CI C, uh, CD sorry, looks on top of this diagram. This is the first CD, it's called continuous delivery. And there's also a bigger CD than this one. There's always a bigger fish. It's called also CD, uh, but it stands for continuous deployment. And basically continuous deployment is a fully automated process. Everything is automated. All tests are automated. You don't need human intervention. And basically once a piece of code has been written and it's merged into the main branch, there's an automated process that gets triggered. The code gets compiled, built, tested, and it gets moved from environment to environment being hit with different batteries of different types of tests like integration testing, uh, regression testing and checking for all types of issues and if everything passes it goes straight to production. So in order to uh, fail a build uh, on continuous deployment you actually need an automated test to fail or something in the automated pipeline to fail. While for continuous delivery, the first one, you have the human uh, intervention. So if the human uh, actor doesn't pass the build, nothing will happen. Yeah, you won't deploy the new version of the application. I hope this makes sense. And let's move on. Enough theory, let's get into practice. The first thing I want to mention is that we have a new repository. And in this repository, I'm going to add everything Azure DevOps related, starting with the pipeline.yaml file, which is a YAML definition of our pipeline that we're going to create. And I would like to briefly mention that Azure DevOps supports two types of pipelines or more like two generations of pipelines. It's the old classic model, which is UI based. And then it's this uh, newer model, which is code, basically YAML based. And this has some advantages over the old one. Um, so we're going with the newer YAML model pipeline as code, right? So yeah, you'll find this on the GitHub repo link down below. Before jumping ahead and starting to use this definition file, let's try to understand it. The first keyword is called trigger and basically it tells the pipeline what branches to listen on. So if I make a code change on the main branch, after my push or my pull request completes, this pipeline will automatically trigger and will do what it is defined to do. Then we have the pull keyword, which basically tells the pipeline what type of agent should run it. Yeah, so we have a Ubuntu latest type of image. We're Linux based after all. Then we've defined some variables. 
And the first thing is we have a variable group and I'll show you what that is in just a second. It's basically um, like a collection of variables you can reutilize uh, in multiple pipelines by just linking them together like a dictionary of variables and it's called docker credentials and you are going to need a variable group called docker credentials yourself i'll show you how to create one in just one second and then we also have one variable called registry name and this is the name of my docker hub registry you will be creating your own docker hub registry and pushing docker images to it so that you learn about that as well and then we have the steps declaration, basically what our pipeline will be doing. Now, given the fact that our pipeline um, is building a Docker image and then storing it in Docker Hub, because that's basically what we need the pipeline to do. We need to compile the application, create the Docker image from that compiled application, and then store that Docker image somewhere. So because we're using a multi-stage Docker build, uh, the simple docker build command which is right here will take care of actually compiling the code and then creating the image and then we just need to log into the docker registry that we've created and push the image to it okay not extremely fancy stuff uh, which is why we only have one powershell step i'm using powershell because i prefer scripting um, my code so that i can have this logical documentation of steps right so the first thing is i'm creating the image name here from some pipeline variables that will also be available to you uh, then i'm making sure everything is lowercase so i'm uh, calling the to lower method in powershell because you can't have docker images with uppercase letters uh, then i'm also outputting that uh, information to make sure i can see it in the pipeline in case something goes wrong i can troubleshoot always make sure to talk to yourself when you're designing a pipeline and output information as much as possible so that you can be on track and find errors and fix them fast uh, then as i said compiling the image locking logging into the docker hub account and pushing the image that's basically all that the pipeline does now that we know what this does let's go ahead and use it and i've made it as simple as possible for you to use this pipeline because it's so generic we can actually use it for all three of our microservices and i will tell you what extra things you need to do in order to make it work for yourself as well so the first thing i'm going to do is actually copy this code yeah and let's move into Azure DevOps and we're going to go to our repositories and let's work from the UI this time. I'm not going to bring up Visual Studio Code, although I have it here. Um, it'll make it easier for you to understand. So I'm on Cart API repository out of the three applications and let's just create a new branch for each of them. Uh, adding pipe. Yeah, let's call it adding pipe. And in this branch, which is the same as master, we're going to add one extra file. And let's call it pipeline.yaml. And add the code that we've copy pasted from GitHub. It's as simple as that. Now you will need to modify the value of your registry to match the docker hub account you've created so in my case i've created a docker hub account called shiki yeah and which is why i need to add shiki and then a forward slash as my registry name and this registry name variable will be used here to compose the name of the, the docker image okay so when you go through docker hub and you create your own account uh, the name you have here you need to add it here and then followed by a forward slash that's basically it and then you commit the change yeah added pipeline.yaml everything looks fine and also as i said you need to create your docker credentials variable group let me show you how to do that now uh, keep in mind we will need these two variables in that group and i'll just open a new tab if you go to pipelines on the left hand side, you have library in here and you see I already have a group, but you will need to say new variable group and I'll just give it a random name 
but you need to make sure it's this name, uh, sorry, this name. So your group needs to be called Docker minus credentials, otherwise the pipeline won't be able to use it. And inside of this, you need to create two variables. One is called Docker username, and it will be your Docker Hub username, which in my case is Shiki. And then you will need a Docker password and this Docker password, you can generate it from here. You go to your name here on the right hand corner and then account settings, security. And in here you request a new access token like I've done here already. You copy this access token and you give its value to the Docker password. Okay, now I'm not going to save this library, this variable group, because I already have it created. Yeah, mine is already here, as you can see. And uh, I also checked in this lock so that they are passwords and you can't see the value of them, right? Because it's sensitive information. So now I have my library in place. These variables now exist. I have my Docker Hub registry created, which is great. Um, I have the pipeline definition file added. The next logical step is for me to actually create a pipeline, which is an object in Azure DevOps. You need to go on this rocket with pipelines on the pipelines menu and create a pipeline. Then you will say that your code is in the first option, Azure repos git. And we're looking at the cart API repository. We already have an existing Azure pipelines YAML file. It's not on the master branch, it's on the adding pipe branch. And then you need to search for it, it's the slash pipeline.yaml. And if we continue, we get the pipeline object created. You can actually run it or uh, just save it. I'm actually going to run it. And now what happens behind the scenes is Azure DevOps will provide me with a Ubuntu agent just as I requested and that Ubuntu agent will run the job for me. And as you can see here, everything gets initialized, the code will get checked out. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, it looked at the adding pipe branch, so it pulled that here. And then now it's building my image. So as you can see, it calculated the image name yeah, this is the output I was talking about in my uh, script, as you can see here, right output calculated image name. So I'm talking to myself through the script. And this is the cart API tag I should be seeing in my Docker hub once this build is successful. So let's give it a few seconds, fast forward. And okay, so everything finished. This is looking good, it's green, it's complete. And if we go to Docker Hub. And open cart API, you can see that this tag was pushed a few seconds ago. Yeah, so I now have a cart API image of my own in my Docker hub repository. And if I want, I can actually download this and play with it locally. So the Docker hub repo is like a cloud storage facility for Docker images. Okay, and we're using Docker hub because it's free when you create your account, it's going to ask you for um, the subscription level you want, just choose the personal one, the one that's free for your own use. And you can send your images from Azure DevOps agents and store them here. What we need to do next is to create two more pipelines, one for the product API and one for the front end. So coming back to Azure DevOps repositories, let's switch to the front end, branches, create a new branch, adding pipe, there we go. adding a new file there we go 
and let's do the same for product API branches new branch adding pipe create new file obviously everything I'm doing now can also be scripted using rest API of Azure DevOps but um, yeah we're just doing it manually here because it's only three repositories so now we've added this code as well we just need to create two more pipelines so new pipeline Azure repos git this time front end uh, YAML already exists it's not on master it's on the adding pipe branch and this is it continue and run this should do it and one more new pipeline Azure repos git product API existing adding pipe branch and pipeline.yaml continue and run again so now we have three pipelines and their job is to compile the code and save our docker images which are our artifacts into docker hub and we are now done all three pipelines are successful and they've completed we can check inside of docker hub and we'll see that yeah we have a front-end image with a new tag pushed two minutes ago we also have a product api tag pushed a few seconds ago and we also have the initial one which is the cart api also pushed a few minutes ago now we have all three images in docker hub repository and we also have an automated process which is a pipeline for each of them which builds compiles the application packages it as a docker image and stores it somewhere safe and finally the reason why we've added the pipeline.yaml definition files into a separate branch and not directly into the main one is because i want to show you guys what a pull request is uh, basically if you go onto the repos tab you have pull requests at the end and let's just switch to cart api first because it was the initial one and as you see here it ha it says you updated the adding underscore pipe branch 14 minutes ago create a pull request and that's exactly what i want to do and basically what i'm doing here is i'm merging or i'm creating a request to merge all of the changes i've made into the adding pipe branch into the master branch and if you see here it's only one file and it's the whole pipeline.yaml file and the beauty of a pull request is that once i create it uh, obviously i'm alone right now and i have no one else who can approve it except for my cat but it might not understand but when you're in a team of developers or in a team of devops who are working together on the same code you can actually have other people as reviewers to look over your changes here in the pull request window and actually approve or maybe give you some suggestions or even reject the changes you're trying to make uh, in case you're creating a, an issue or putting a bug in the code well i'm alone here so i'm going to complete this myself and as you can see here it says delete adding pipe branch after merging it's exactly what i want to do and i will complete the merge and now let's do the same for the front end repository and complete this one as well and one more time for the product api all right so now if we move on to files you will see that first of all the pipeline.yaml now exists in the master branch because i have approved the pull request and also uh, there's no more adding pipe branch so everything was merged to master and if we go to run the pipeline again when we try to run it we only have the master branch to run from okay uh, one very important information here you can't run from a branch where you don't have the pipeline.yaml definition uh, 
Uh, it might be obvious for some of you, but other people uh, find it difficult to understand. So if you want to run this pipeline, you need the pipeline.yaml definition inside of the branch you're trying to run from. Uh, that's basically it. Now, I hope I didn't bore you too much with all of these explanations, and I hope this is useful for you to understand what a pipeline is, how to create one in Azure DevOps. We've obviously only scratched the surface and created a minimalistic pipeline, but if you want to develop upon what's already been created and add other functionality, go ahead and do so. Uh, let me know what you want to learn more about in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.